In this problem, we're told a dart is thrown horizontally with an initial speed of 10 meters per second towards point P, the bullseye on the dartboard. It hits at point Q on the rim, vertically below P, 0.19 seconds later. So A asks us, what is the distance PQ? And B says, how far away from the dartboard is the dart released? So I drew a diagram of what's going on here. We have this dart. We're throwing it. It's going to travel and go down a little bit. It's going to hit point Q, which we know is below the bullseye, which is point P. And so it's going to travel some distance. It's released at 10 meters per second. And so, yeah, that's going to be a drawing of what's going on. Let's go ahead and write down what we're given first. So since this is going to be two-dimensional, you want to do the given in the x and the y direction. So in the x direction, we're told that v sub 0 of x, which is the initial velocity, right? It's going to be released at 10 meters per second horizontally. So if they say horizontally, you know that's going to be in the x direction. So the initial velocity in the x direction, 10 meters per second. And then in the y direction, if they don't specify what it is, uh, generally it's just going to be zero. So you generally assume it's zero unless specified differently. So v sub zero of y is going to be zero meters per second. And then we know the time it's going to take, right? The time to travel this is 0.19 seconds. So 1.9 or 0.19 seconds. And then it's going to be the same for both, right? The time it takes to get to the end for both. No matter which direction we go in, it's going to be 0.19 seconds. And then what you also need to know, acceleration in the x direction is almost always zero unless specified differently. And then in the y direction, it's just going to be the force of gravity. So we know the force of gravity on Earth. We're assuming this is on Earth, so minus 9.8 meters per second squared. That's the force of gravity. And then uh, now we can just go ahead and solve. So we're going to start with A first. So A asks, uh, what is the distance PQ? So essentially this distance right here. So notice how we start throwing it at P, right? And then it goes down to Q. So essentially uh, PQ is just going to be the change in our Y, right? Because we start at P and then it goes down to Q. So our change in Y is what we need to find. And so the formula we're going to use to solve this is delta Y equals V sub zero Y times T plus one half A T squared. And so we have every variable. We just have to plug it in and actually solve for delta Y. And so let's go ahead and do that. Um, so delta y equals v sub 0 in the y direction, right? So that's going to be 0 times the time, which is 0.19, and then plus 1 half times the acceleration in the y direction, minus 9.8 times t squared, which is just 0.19 squared. So essentially, delta y is going to be equal to just this part, right? Because 0 times this is going to become 0. So it's just 1 half times minus 9.8 times 0.19 squared. If you plug that in your calculator, you're going to get minus, keep in minus minus, right? Because we have a negative sign there. Minus 0.176 meters. So that's going to be our change in y, right? But it's asking for the distance. And you know that distance can't be negative. It doesn't make sense. So the change in y from p to q is minus that. So what you want to do is just take the magnitude. So essentially, it's just going to be the positive version of this which is just 0.176 meters. So yeah, that's going to be your answer to A. Let's go ahead and move on to B now. So B is trying to, or we're trying to find the change in X, right? How far away from the start to the end. So we're going to use the same exact formula, except for we're just going to solve for delta X instead. So we're going to use V sub zero of X times T plus one half A T squared. And so this is going to be a bit easier, and the reason is because a is just going to be 0. So v sub 0 x is 10. Time is 0.19 again, plus 1 half times 0, right? Because the acceleration in the x direction is 0, times t squared 0.19. So essentially, it's just going to be 10 times 0.19, because this whole side is going to go to 0, right? We could write plus 0, but we don't need to. And so if you do this, 10 times 0.19, it's going to be equal to 1.9, and keep in mind the units we're using, meters, right? So 1.9 meters. So this right here is going to be your answer to the second question, or B. And so yeah, hopefully you found this video useful.